speak through Fox News and let um, the independents who are tuning into you, let them know what it is that she stands for, the principles behind her positions. It used to be that new candidates were advised to brush up on the issues so they could handle questions from anyone, even tough questions. The idea behind that was that it prepared you also for actually governing. But now the advice to candidates is only to talk to sympathetic reporters. We need to start now by electing strong leaders who aren't afraid to shake it up. We need strong, principled leaders, public servants who respect our Constitution. We need clarity. We deserve answers. So we don't ask the same questions tomorrow. Good night, Lon. Tonight's rewrite. The stupidest phrase of this campaign season is also its most popular phrase. And you've heard it already more times than you can count. Some of you need to man up. And man up. And do what you're asking other people to do. Man up, Harry Reid. I joined Sharon Engel in calling them too to just man up. Man up, Harry Reid. On top of all of that, Sarah Palin says the president doesn't have the cojones, her word, to secure our border with Mexico. Does Sarah Palin know what cojones are? Does she know that she doesn't have any? And that if she's saying it takes cojones to do something, it means she can't do it. No woman can do it. Then there was this from Christine O'Donnell during her primary with Republican Mike Castle. You know, I, I released a statement today saying, Mike, this is not a bake-off. Get your man pants on. Man up. Man pants. Here we have women candidates constantly throwing around sexist terminology, which they obviously don't understand is actually sexist toward women. They are saying the only way to do something correctly is to do it like a man. Their idiotic campaign staffs are rehearsing them in this phraseology, thinking they're ingeniously demeaning the men they are hurling their anti-women chants at. If these women candidates want to argue the absurdity that one gender is better at governing than another, when are they going to realize that what they should be saying is woman up as in woman up harry reed if you want to be as good a senator as sharon angle would be and yeah sarah palin should be saying barack obama can't secure our border with mexico because he doesn't have the tetas to do it perhaps we are not properly educating our youth in the exceptional nature of america it's worrisome because this belief in American exceptionalism is something that every new generation has got to make its own if we expect our republic and our liberties to be secure and to live on. For America to survive, we have got to pass this on to that next generation, to the young kids who are here, to the students. You know, this real America, does it exist, John? Well, in terms of real American and exceptionalism, look, the most basic thing that people can do in support of a democracy is vote. And we take our votes very seriously. The people of Alaska voted for Sarah Palin, and Sarah Palin quit. Exceptional people don't quit. And I, I seriously tell my kids this probably two or three times a week. It's better to lose than to quit. So she can sit there and she can talk about being exceptional. She can talk about better of America. If she were a better person, she would have stood and fought. She chose to check out and to do it to make money. I've got no problem with making money. But that's what she is. She's a reality. I have a different, different observation, though. He, he hears what's going on. Th that speech, the first 20 minutes, was every vapid cliche strung together. It, it, it was complete, almost nonsense. But let's look a little closer. Hang on just one second. I want to look a little closer in the numbers here at Sarah Palin. Among conservatives, 65% have a favorable rating, 25% an unfavorable rating. Among moderates, 31% favorable, 60% unfavorable. And among independent voters, you can't win the presidency without them. And they were huge in helping the Republicans take back the House. 38% favorable, 45% unfavorable. So she has a problem in the middle of the electorate. She's extra sassy these days, too, because yeah, she's yeah. winning. All her mama grizzlies are winning. <laughs> and they're busting through, busting through that glass ceiling. <laughs> and the mama grizzlies are going to Washington, and they're going to flip your picnic table, Dave. <laughs> you know what I noticed on Fox News last night, though, is on Fox News, they address her as Governor Palin. Which is like calling me Dairy Queen employee. <laughs> like, I was once, but I quit. That's right. <laughs> okay. 
There is that point there that uh, somehow Sarah Palin forgets. Oh, well. Suppose Senator John Doe puts forth a constitutional amendment that would outlaw abortion, even in cases of rape or incest, and he asked you to attend the announcement and support him in that. Would you do it? Um, I would. I would. Yes, um, uh, a proposal like that, I would stand by it. Let's be completely clear about the facts here. There is no place in the world and no time in history where restricting women's reproductive rights makes a people or a nation more free or more equal. These extreme positions on abortion are without any question a war on American girls and women and the fact that there are women who are both complicit and participatory in it is really neither surprising nor unprecedented. It has always been true and it is incredibly important that we recognize that despite the fact that we can be very proud of these women as women and as politicians, that the question is how do women as citizens fare on the other side of them either being elected or not elected. The new Associated Press poll finds that Sarah Palin is the most polarizing of the potential 2012 Republican presidential candidates. Now, is that news? I don't consider that to be news.